<clears throat> Here we are in 3.5. So this is the very last section of the homework. And um, I apparently forgot to write down um, how many questions are in this section. But after this will be the test to review and then the test. And there's 11 homework problems on this section. And so let's go ahead and take a look. Now, this is over rational functions. And rational functions are basically just fraction functions. So you'll have a polynomial in the numerator and another polynomial in the denominator. And you have to make sure that your denominator does not ever equal zero. So for the basic ra uh, rational function, one over x, um, they give you some information about it here. So the graph looks like this. And so they have the table of x values and that's what you get. And then you notice it's got a break at zero. Okay, so it's got these things happening here, but it never ever touches zero. So the domain is from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. The range is from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity because again, it goes this way and this way, but it never touches zero. So there's parentheses around those zeros and not brackets. Now, um, it does uh, decrease on this interval and decreases on that interval. So both of them together. Um, it does have a discontinuity at zero right because there's a break there in the graph and the y-axis is what's called a vertical asymptote so this here and if I do it in a different color so that it stands out um, this y-axis is a vertical line and it's my vertical asymptote it's an imaginary line that the graph never crosses okay um, and it also has a horizontal asymptote, which I can represent using a blue color at the x-axis, which is this one here. So there's a horizontal line, and it may cross the horizontal line in the middle, but the ends should never cross that a horizontal line. Okay, and that's called a horizontal asymptote. So these invisible lines here that are restricting my graph those are called asymptotes. Um, and it is an odd function because you do have x to the one um, and it is symmetric with respect to the origin. So if I take this image here in the first, quadra uh, first um, quadrant and I flip it over the x-axis, it'll look like this. And then if I flip it over the y-axis, it lands on the other half of the graph. So it does have symmetry with respect to the origin. Now you have another kind of um, rational function, whereas if you had a square at the bottom. Well, in this case, when you plug in negative values, you still get positives. So instead of having the piece of graph down here, it's flipped up and now it's up there, okay? But you still have that vertical asymptote of zero. So you never, ever, ever cross this line here. So your domain will be broken up at zero. So it's negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity. And notice that even though it never ever touches um, the y, the x-axis, there's a horizontal asymptote there. Um, the value gets really close to zero, but it doesn't include zero. So the range will have a zero with the parentheses, and then it does go up to positive infinity. So that's there. Um, it does increase on the left hand side and then decrease on the right hand side. And again, your discontinuity is at zero because of that vertical asymptote. And then the horizontal asymptote is the reason why the range has an open interval. This is an even function because it's a square and it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So if you flip over what's in the first quadrant over the y-axis, it lands on the other half itself. Okay. Now here we go about the asymptotes. So that's great that we know that these asymptotes exist, but what's more important is how do we find those asymptotes, right? So um, here it tells us how to determine the asymptotes. So it says for any uh, vertical asymptote set, or find any vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero, 
Okay, if a is a zero of the denominator, then the line x equals to a is your vertical asymptote. Okay, um, the other kind of asymptotes you could have is a horizontal asymptote. So if the numerator has lesser degree than the denominator, so I represent that by degree of the numerator and degree of the denominator. If the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then it's automatically at y equals zero, which was the x-axis. However, if the numerator and the denominator have the same degree, meaning the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then what you do is you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the leading coefficient. Since they have the same degree, you're just gonna look at the leading coefficient of the top and the leading coefficient of the bottom, and that will give you your horizontal asymptote if they have the same degree. If the numerator um, is of degree exactly one more than the denominator, so in this case, your degree of your numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, but by one, by one only, okay, it's just one more bigger, then there will be what's called an oblique or slanted asymptote. And to find that, you do long division and all this good stuff. Um, but I don't think we're going to be doing that too, too much. We might have one example. I'll have to get into the examples and we'll figure out if we've got to do that. Um, there's actually a last case. And that is if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by more than one, then that means there is no... A horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote okay so you just have the verticals and none of the others so let's go ahead and see what they have in store for us so of course the first thing they want us to do is just um, find any vertical horizontal or oblique asymptotes um, and then the computer wants you to actually graph those asymptotes and then give the domain of each function so we're gonna do all three of those criteria for these two parts, okay? So for this one, the vertical asymptote I can find by taking the denominator equal to zero. So x squared minus x minus six equal to zero. Now you could use quadratic formula, you could factor it however you want to get that, um, to solve that quadratic, okay? Um, I always default to quadratic formula just because it works and it doesn't matter what the answers look like, I'll get them. So negative, negative 1 plus or minus negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6 all over 2 times 1. So I'm using a equal to 1, b equal to negative 1, and c equal to 6. So I get 1 plus or minus the square root of 24 plus 1, which is 25, over 2. 1 plus or minus 5 over 2. So if I add, I get 6 over 2, which is 3. And if I minus, I get negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And so those are my two um, vertical asymptotes. So I have x equals to 3 and x equals to negative 2. Now if I want to graph that, here's negative 2 and here's positive 3. And essentially what that means is that it's got one of those imaginary vertical lines going through it. And my graph will never cross it. Now I'm not asked to graph it, the whole thing. I'm just asked to graph the asymptotes. So I'm just drawing the dotted lines and that's it. Um, now for the horizontal or oblique asymptotes, let's see what we get there. So we have to consider the degree. So the degree of the numerator the degree of the numerator is actually equal to exponent of 1. And the degree of the denominator, is the highest exponent, is 2. And so when 1 is actually less than 2, so the case I have is where the numerator is less than the denominator. And in that case, according to that chart, the horizontal asymptote is going to automatically be at y equals 0. So y equals 0 here and so I'm going to draw my horizontal asymptote on top of the um, x-axis and then now the last part asked me to give the domain so the domain is going to be broken up using your vertical asymptotes 
So you've got this region over here, which is negative infinity to that number, negative two. You've got this region in the middle, which would be negative two to positive three. And then you've got this region over here, which would be three to infinity. Now they didn't ask me for the range, but if I were to give them the range, actually I couldn't. Because I have three sections of the graph, I know that on the horizontal asymptote, the ends are gonna trail close to the, the blue line, but I don't know what's happening in the middle. So it could very well be that I actually cross through the middle, um, and then in that case, the range would be negative infinity to infinity. So I really can't tell you the range of this function just because I don't know what this middle section looks like. Okay, um, So we, that's why they don't ask us for the range when all they're asking us to do is graph the asymptotes. Now if they had asked me to graph the whole function, which they will eventually, then I would be able to tell them what the range is. Okay, So let's do the next one. Um, my vertical asymptote, I need to set my denominator equal to zero. So x plus one equals zero. And then um, if I minus one on both sides, I get negative one. So I only have one vertical asymptote in this problem and it's at negative one. So I'm gonna draw my dotted line here. And now for the horizontal or oblique, I don't know which one I'm gonna have. Um, let's do the degree of the numerator. So the exponent here is one and then the degree of the denominator is also one, and these guys are equal, which means my degrees are equivalent. And when your degrees are equivalent, you do have a horizontal asymptote, and it's at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is four, over the leading coefficient of the denominator, which is one. So that means my horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals four. So one, two, three, four, and that is where my horizontal asymptote will be. Okay, now again, I cannot tell you what the range would be, but I can tell you what the domain would be based on this graph. So I'm gonna have, here's my vertical asymptote, I'm gonna have what's on the left and what's on the right. So negative infinity to negative one, and then negative one to positive infinity. And this example we're not doing, that one would actually have an oblique asymptote, but I didn't think we were gonna be covering obliques in this particular class. Um, so I'm gonna go over the graphing techniques, but I'm going to save the example for the next video because these do take quite a bit of work when it comes to graphing. Um, and I think that's pretty much all we have left is we're gonna graph about three functions and then they're going to give us the graph and we have to give them the equation for two more functions. So let's go ahead and cover the technique. So the first thing is to find the vertical asymptotes. Next, find the horizontal asymptotes. Next, find the y-intercept by plugging in zero into your function. Um, four, plot the x-intercepts. And you get that by solving f of x equal to zero. But remember, when you have a fraction equal to zero, you know, here's p over q equal to zero, you multiply by the common denominator, don't you? And so then really you only end up with the numerator equal to zero. So that's what this is telling you. Denominator equal to zero gives you the asym vertical asymptotes. Numerator equal to zero gives you the x-intercepts, okay? And that's important to remember. Denominator equal to zero gives you the vertical asymptotes. Numerator equal to zero gives you the x-intercepts. Um, and then you'll determine whether you have a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote. That's all this is saying. It just gives you other weird words. Um, but basically this is horizontal asymptote. This is vertical asymptote. This is x-intercepts. This is y-intercept. This is also horizontal asymptote. Um, oh, it says determine whether your graph will intersect. Um, normally that comes out all by itself, but I'll show you how to do that. And basically once you get, if you have a horizontal asymptote, then you have to set your function equal to that value that you get for your horizontal asymptote. We don't have any obliques, so we won't have to do that one. Um, and then plot everything that you have, and then if you have to, choose x values in each interval, um, like in each segment around the 
the vertical asymptotes um, so that you can get um, the complete graph, okay? And then you just connect all the dots and complete your sketch. So let me stop the video here and then we'll go through all of those steps to graph the next three problems.